Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, and welcome to Luthier's Question Time Live. This is episode 60 of a podcast live stream where I answer your questions about pretty much anything. I mean, I might not answer them, but you can ask. So please do. This whole thing depends entirely on what you have to say, what you want to know, and uh, where we're at. So it has been, it's been a long week. I actually didn't even see Crimson Guitars headquarters at all, not even once. It just did not happen. So uh, there's that, which sucks because there were people who, who I wanted to meet. But uh, anyway, so, uh, okay. Mark Milligan says, hi, Ben. That is the perfect, perfect comment to start the day on. We've got Mark Milligan. We've got Robert R. We've got Mr. Waffles, Joe Brown, Joel Shapiro, Rab Knox, Tahoe Mike, and many, many others. SC Guitar is a moderator for the evening. And uh, oh, Frugal Fixer. Jaybird Customs. Uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of us. And it's all good. So, uh, something... Something different, something different is happening this evening, and uh, I'm a bit quiet tonight, according to Rav Knox. Okay, well, we can adjust that. So let's see, uh, how's that going? Um, <laughs> okay, Joe is saying Mike's a bit dodgy. Snap, crackle, pop, pop. Check your mic connection. It's a different microphone. Oh. And here we go, we've immediately got some issues. Okay. Okay. Okay, anyway, look, so this uh, seems to be an issue. So what I'm gonna do is change microphones. Uh, let's see how that goes. So uh, I'm now currently running off a different microphone. Let me know where we're at now. The very annoying thing is that I have run this several times <laughs> live. Everything worked absolutely fine. The second we go to you guys, uh, it dies. All right, so tell me, are we still live? It does not look like we are. Dagnabbit. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so the microphone's a little bit quiet. Let's go. Volume up. Okay, so what's happened, all of this can be blamed on Creverai as much as anything else. Uh, he, is, he is the man to whom uh, we should talk because uh, he insisted that it was a fantastic idea for me to get the Atom Mini Pro Stream Deck kind of a, a, an item. And uh, that is what I did. Now, according to this... Uh, the stream rate is too high, so this isn't actually going very well. Can you guys let me know what the uh, what the quality of the video is like? Video is skipping a bit. Okay, cool. Everybody, hold on for a second, and uh, I'm going to make a few changes. I'm not sure if this will work live. Bit of buffering. Okay, cool. So anyway, what we've got here is uh, a, a new system. It's the Atom Mini Pro. It means I'm not actually streaming from my computer, which is which is pretty good. Uh, and I've got a lot more. Uh, I've got a lot more that I can do. 
up to and including having multiple cameras and uh, even computer screens and all sorts. So uh, this is what I need to play with in here. Uh, find out <sighs> yeah I need to change change a setting because apparently we are well we're streaming a little bit too heavy anyway uh, please give me questions oh here we are I'm fairly sure Nope. Video quality is awesome. Okay. From Max. Uh, are we still very quiet? That surprises me. Aha. Test one. Test two. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, I hate this. I hate this. This is the ongoing Ben Crow um, technical difficulty issue. But, uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay. Uh, let us know if there's any change in the, in the quality of the video. Are you still getting stuttering and all of that jazz or not? Because uh, that is the biggest issue. Once we've got this sorted, I think we'll be fine. Okay. Well, this is fun, isn't it? I can't even find where to change the setting at this stage. Which is silly, because it should be right here. Which means I'm probably not able to do it while I'm streaming. Uh, which is fair. Okay. <laughs> okay, Disco Stew is coming with a super chat. Uh, says, ooh, fancy camera pants. It's, it's quite fun. It is quite fun. Um, ben Timer says it's loud enough for him. Radnox says better. Luther is f says I'm freezing every 10 seconds. Um, this might be something I need to deal with. Uh, and we, yeah. Yeah, it, it is free freezing. Um, Joe came with a super chat saying that uh, Jay is tracking guitars. Uh, has a, had a question on his mind all day, but he's completely forgotten what it was. Okay, uh, now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to stop the stream, change some settings and uh, get back to you in a second. Joe Brown wants to know what I'm getting him for Christmas. Okay. Uh, well, some of this stuff, potentially, uh, not that stuff. <laughs> okay uh yeah there's there's a lot happening i've just finished filming a video on this system actually and there's going to be a giveaway and a raffle uh, with two of my guitars in it for that matter for that matter uh anyhow i'm going to stop the stream just for a second and uh get back to you in a sec all right uh we should be back uh nothing should have changed except for the fact that I have now changed the quality of the video. Are we live? Okay. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Fine. Well, there we go. So uh, what we've done, I've just changed the, the main setting. Uh, we're uh, streaming on medium rather than the highest quality possible. And uh, it's one of those things. So uh, 
Uh, okay, so Creever says uh, buffing and stuttering is not from my side of the stream. That's on the consumer side, i.e., the quality of the uh, um, the, inter the internet on that side. But uh, it's also probably not helped by the fact that I've got I was streaming uh, at nine thousand kilobits per second or something like that. So uh, anyway, look, I, I've been dying to show you guys um, what what this is all, what I've been doing basically. So uh, let's let's stay with this with this camera that you that you're on. I'm just going to leave for a sec, and uh, obviously the audio is going to change as well. But um, yeah, this is going to make you a little bit ill. So what we've got, I've been uh, I've been setting up trusses that uh, <laughs> that are just screwed to the ceiling. This here is a very cool little camera. It's a, a Zoom H something something. And it's tiny with really good quality. It shoots up to 4K, but it's also got excellent audio. And uh, various trusses, microphones, etc. And uh, it's held with a, a little mini tripod, uh, or at least boom arm, that's 10 inches long. And then up by the main camera, which is just hanging from the ceiling at the moment, uh, there's a screen so I can see what you guys see and what's happening and what's what's going on really. So this stream seems to be doing better. And there's squirrels and all sorts. And uh, yeah, it just means that uh, my life is uh, more interesting. And then down here, I've got the stream deck. It's hooked directly to the internet. It's also hooked to a um, an SSD. I can change all of the cameras here as well as different transitions and bits and pieces. And uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool if I do say so myself. Uh, now the best thing about it in, enti in its entirety is the fact that uh, I didn't have to, uh, I didn't have to phone Creever and ask him for help setting it up. Uh, it's, it actually pretty much worked out of the box. Of course, there are uh, issues when you go live and that is that's what we're dealing with now but uh, yeah as long as the stream is good as long as the stream is good then uh, that's what we're talking about garage master guitar says what could possibly go wrong i agree pretty much everything uh, nick guitar says it's a pro studio setup almost uh, Mr. Waffles, it's a mini TV studio. It really is. The the really cool thing is, and uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to actually show you what's going on, is that uh, I can record direct from here to my SSD, and uh, I can actually do some, some mini editing prior to the video going live. So we can have uh, different... Um, there you go, you can see that fade. I can change the fades so it goes and does something else um, if I really fancy it. Although, obviously, mix is the best. You can change the speeds of those sorts of things. I haven't figured out how to have a picture in a picture, i.e. I could have a picture in the bottom left that is my talking head while, uh, while on the main screen is the computer. Uh, here we are, 77 viewers, 30 likes. Um, the stream health seems to be getting better. <sighs> Ish. It's still high, but okay, we'll go for it. But yeah, anyway, uh, I think it's really cool. My biggest issue is going to be figuring out which camera to talk to. Now, the main reason, the main reason for all of this was not just to spend a hell of a lot of money <laughs> on tech gear. Hell, I even had to buy a um, a switch, a, a switcher, so that I could have my Cat Six going in. And then, oh, ah, anyway, um, it's not to do any of that. It is because I can now have four cameras filming live while I actually build something, uh, and that that's going to be incredible. Okay. George Davis, who's Clark Griswold? I feel I should probably know this. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Okay. Let's go to the main camera. This is camera one. I'll get that sorted. I still need a few bits and pieces. Uh, now, I'm going to be able to live stream literally an entire day's work. And this smaller camera still is on a tripod. And some of that will be going through... Um, some of that will be going through other cameras. So, for example, you've got the, the overhead one here. And, uh, you know, you'll be seeing that. I could have another one off to the side. And you can see what's going on from there. But also the prettier shots here. Now, it just gives a lot more flexibility. And it should save me a lot of time during my day-to-day -day filming as well. Because I'm not actually having to click record on any particular camera. Um, so... Yeah, it's fun. It's great fun. <sighs> now, here is the... I'm here to answer your questions, so let's have a look and see uh, what we're talking about tonight. Okay. Uh... Leon says, uh, who do I send an email to to tell them I'm interested in the hand tools only build kit? I know you said it before in one of the streams, but I forgot which one. Uh, send an email through to shop at crimsonguitars.com and they'll put you on the list. Uh, now, I've actually seen some footage of various tests for inlays and things. Uh, last week was emailed through to me. So that is going to be supremely cool. The kit is literally in progress. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. In fact, I think I'm probably going to end up doing a standalone video of me putting the kit together uh, as a sort of a one-off. Hell, maybe a live stream. Uh, you know, in the not too distant future. Uh, now, live streams like that are actually going to be streamed on the main channel. I think, or at least I'm going to try and see what happens with the live stream build on the main channel. Okay. Uh, Mark Milligan says, oh, you have me salivating. I take it's more, more random live stream on builds. Yes, emphatically. I want to do more tool making. I want to do more of all sorts. But uh, I also want to have more videos filmed in an easy way. Now, this setup is something that I could replicate at Crimson Guitars and get it to a point where, for example, uh, one of the luthiers there has this set up around his bench and he just has to push a button, record, and then choose the camera, and he's away. Uh, I spend a lot of my time playing around with, uh, with cameras, putting them in specific places, uh, getting the shots right, adjusting microphones and all that. And uh, if I'm using this camera here above me, which is the Zoom, it's a 170 quid camera, uh, Zoom Q2N. Apparently it's got great quality audio. And uh, yeah, we can just set it up and be done. Uh, so other people can create videos for our channel. Uh, once it's recording onto an SSD, the editor, uh, Talitha or Bear, can go in and, and fix it and put it out live. So, uh, so yeah. And uh, George Davis says, way over my head. It is literally above my head, but uh, in reality, it's so easy. It's so incredibly easy. Uh, the Atom Mini, hell, I got the Mini Pro, uh, which has got a few more features, but the Atom Mini's not, you know, they're a few hundred quid. And uh, as long as you've got the right cameras that can work with it, and luckily this, this uh, Zoom One does, uh, some Canons don't. Some Canons have... You need to have clean HDMI. Basically, when you're playing with a, a, a Canon... A ca with, with a camera, and it's got that little box that follows your face, for example, to say that it's focused, or all the data around the edge saying, you know, what your white balance is and all that, you need to be able to set the camera so that it does not send that through the HDMI cable. And, uh, for example, I went and... Uh, found the EOS 600Ds that I used to film. We've got a pair of them. I used to film these at Crimson Guitar. At Crimson, we use these all the time. And these do not send out clean HDMI, so I can't use them to stream, sadly. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's the way it goes. 
But uh, yeah, anyway. <sighs> okay, Frugal Fixer is home. Okay, Brian Flyman says uh, Whitetail Antler for nuts. Good. Uh, I have personally never experienced that, but I have heard various uh, luthiers in the States and heard of others who do use it. So, yeah, it, sh it should be fine. I don't see why not. Okay. Okay, uh, Marco Rachevic says, Hello, Ben, did you think to produce a Crimson Guitars radius uh, planes for fretboards? Should it be useful? Uh, an actual radius plane? <sighs> Honestly, it would, be, it would be a cool thing to have. It emphatically would be a cool thing to have. Unfortunately, it would probably end up costing a couple of thousand pounds uh, because the engineering is so crazy. Look up... <laughs> Here we go. Um, so let's 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 do this. Um, bridge city centers tools. Bridge city tools images. So here we go. These guys make the most amazing planes. I don't want links to videos. Uh, that's Jimbo Tools. There we go. These are some of the most incredible planes on the planet. And uh, I, I would love to own some. I really would. But um, you just... Well, it is this level of quality that you would have to do in order to... Uh, in order to make... A radius plane, especially since what we would have to do on top of that is uh, make it adjustable because many luthiers want a a 10 inch radius, uh, others want a 12. And then we'd have to think about potentially um, compound radiuses and how would that even be done? Is it possible? Now, I have considered a, a radius, an adjustable radius sanding block. So uh, we we make sanding blocks. Uh, whoops! Ha! <laughs> I hit the wrong camera. We make uh, actually this is a very very old one, but we make radius sanding blocks at Crimson, and you can buy the set. Hell, this is pre. This is a prototype of this one, and uh, it's got the sandpaper on it, and it does what you want, and it uh, it's you know. That's the way to do it. I, I start with the hand plane when I'm ready to sing the fretboard and then finish with a sanding block with about 80 grit sandpaper on it. So uh, so there we go. Andy Betts has come in with a super chat. Thank you very much, Andy. Um, says, my guitar is choking above the 12th fret uh, after, after a fret dress. Could this be sorted out by sanding some fall away where the neck joins the body? Okay, so if you didn't have... If you didn't have that before the fret dress, my first thing is to just go back and check all of the essentials. Uh, check the first of all the truss rod. Uh, if you hold the frets, uh, the string down at the first fret and your twenty second or twenty fourth fret, you should see a little bit of relief, say half a millimeter. Uh, I'm not going to even guess what it would be in inches. Uh, twenty thousandths is around about is something I hear people say, but you want to have a little bit of uh, uh, relief there. If you don't have any relief, then that's what your problem is. Uh, so play around with the truss rod. You may well have adjusted the saddle height and taken that a little bit too low. Uh, and well, I don't know. It's not likely that you've adjusted the nut in the same process. But check those things first. Uh, now, sanding and fall away or creating fall away when you're leveling frets is it's a very, very good thing. And uh, we now do it as standard on every single instrument that we make, uh, and even uh, almost all students at the, in the Luthier School at Crimson will also do fall away when they're learning how to do frets. So, uh, 
So yeah, I mean, it will help with that problem, but I don't think it is necessarily the cause of what you've got right now. Um, double check with a fret rocker. Um, this actually is one of the rare cases where it might be just in order to help diagnose what went wrong, it might be worth putting a standard straight edge along the top of the frets themselves to see uh, to see what's happening on there. But uh, yeah, I would say, yeah, one of those things. Okay. Hold on, GGBO. Ben Timon says, when will GGBO begin next year? Or do you not know yet? You know me well. No, I, I, know, I know when I'm going to be making the announcement, the official announcement about it. And uh, that is going to be on, the official announcement is going to be on the 1st of February. I'm moving it back a little bit this year. And again, the following year, I'll be moving it back again to March. And I'm probably going to stay at that point. So announcement will end up being... Uh, so what it means is that the actual build videos will be going live in the summer. And I think that basically <laughs> basically a lot of a lot of you guys a lot of the people competing in the what's on the bench in the what's on the bench videos a lot of you people competing in the great guitar build off are competing in small garages or in sheds or actually a not insignificant percentage are competing in a cold workshop no i was going to be all ominous and stuff and change the camera are competing outside. You're literally having to build guitars outside. So I want it to be in, you know, spring and summertime, uh, for the Western Hemisphere at least, uh, as much as possible. I know this is a worldwide thing, and yeah, it's difficult. It's very difficult. Okay, 107 people watching and only 49 likes. Come on, guys, click like. Now. Uh, Raw Pot Guitars is coming with five euro super chat. Thank you very much. Hey, I remembered which camera to talk to. It says, hi, Ben. How would you build up an opaque open pour nitro finish? Uh, sanding between coats or just in the end to get a smooth satin finish? Thanks. Uh, you've got me here. I'm afraid I do not use nitro. I've never really, I haven't used nitro personally in probably two decades, uh, which is... Uh, yeah, significant. So honestly, I'm the wrong person to ask. However, um, you're saying opaque, you're saying open pour, I would go relatively thick and I would go try and get the cleanest finish possible uh, at the last stage. And this is just based on, you know, other finishing I've done. I would probably rub it down on in between the final two coats. So spray on, let it cure, rub any um, dust particles or issues away on the second or the penultimate uh, coat and then go and spray the cleanest possible final coat you can and uh, uh, we'll be there so yeah that's what I would say now uh, JS Trucking and Guitars has come in with a super chat um, uh, thank you very much. It says, Ben, you f you missed my first two Super Chats. One of them was cut off because of the technical di difficulties. But the second, uh, I'm pretty sure I did. Oh, no, there we go. It was during the technical difficulties. I did see it and I quoted and said um, that uh, you had you had a question that had been you'd been thinking about all day, but you'd now forgotten it. I'm hoping this was your question. Uh, the second was asking what radius should my fretboard be? Uh, I'm using pre-cut 16-inch radius wire. Okay, now that's that's a good question, actually. So you want, preferably, you want the wire to be at a radius that is slightly tighter than the than the fretboard. So the the ends of the frets go in, and then it smooshes flat inside of the fretboard. And essentially, what is happening here is the fat sections on the tang will go down push the wood aside which then closes over them a little bit but then 
after that it goes sideways as you flatten the fret out. So technically I would say 17 inch or 18 inch radius, but that has a whole different thing going on uh, in that it that radius might not suit your playing style. So the other option is just to uh, do a 12 inch radius for example and then very carefully bend the fret wire uh, you could you could go and buy a specialist fret bending plier at a silly amount of money uh, or and it's slightly better at the job I'm not going to say it isn't but uh, or you could get a couple of pairs of pliers just standard standard pliers <laughs> I don't know what camera to do hold on and uh, uh, two pairs of pliers so here we go failed uh, I would probably put masking tape across the jaws and then very gently put more radius into the fret and as long as you're careful you don't twist it you'll be all right I am absolutely sure okay Whew. Andy Betts. Andy Betts has come in and says uh, the neck is a vintage radius. There is relief. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, no, here we go. I, I should have guessed. Uh, there is relief. It only chokes when you string bend, uh, for example, the top E. Okay, so what you've got is a guitar. What you've got is a guitar that is literally not designed to string bend. Um, as you as you bend, essentially what you're doing is you are increasing the the radius of the fretboard as the string perceives it, all right? Basically, your string is a spaceship approaching the speed of light, and time as seen from the spaceship is not the same as time as perceived on its home planet. <laughs> so you perceive I can't believe I'm doing this wow uh, you your, your your string you think that your radius is 10 inches or nine nine and a half inches or something silly like that from fender uh, but the string is saying okay wow this uh, this radius used to be uh, 10 and wow it's now coming to seven and a half or used to be seven and a half and it's going to you know it's going tighter and as such the string is is bouncing off and uh, causing issues so you've got a physical issue here. Uh, it is possible that fall away may fix it, but it is probable, in my opinion, that you would want to uh, create a bit, well, fall away in combination with changing the radius on those lower frets, i.e. creating a bit of a compound radius. And uh, that should do it. But uh, yeah, very interesting problem. Thank you very much for, um, uh, yeah, thank you very much for that question. Ha ha! I like it. Um, okay, hold on. I'm actually not using this microphone, so there is no point in me wasting the batteries by having it on, and I can even get rid of that because I'm not using it. <sighs> Real KH, how's it going? Uh, we've got a super chat, thank you very much. And uh, he says, how to make the correct oh yeah okay how should i make the correct angle for a headstock on a fanned fret guitar when the nut is fanned and the starting point of the angle is different and uh, there's parenthesis saying good to be back i was going to say i don't think i've seen you for a while um welcome back okay It's amazing how much water I drink during the live stream. <sighs> Nebula. Uh, I talk about this a hell of a lot during the Nebula build. She's not there. She's now with her new owner. And uh, because that was the same thing, a fan fret guitar with a fan nut. But uh, what essentially happens is that you don't have one angle. Uh, it is very subtle, but essentially you're creating a twist in the headstock as it goes down. And it's so subtle that in reality, nobody will notice it. What people do notice 
is if you try and have say a 10 degree angle and then you've got the flat bit between uh, a flat triangle behind the nut so you would for example put your 10 degree radius on going from the uh, from the base e corner of the nut down to the end of the uh, uh, down to the end of the headstock and then you will plane down to the other corner to whatever that angle happens to be and this is the real thing so I, I'm I got it in the net today a, a new video went live on the main channel and some guy was shouting at me for getting the the headstock angle wrong on the hand tool only build and there isn't a wrong angle there's slightly different to what you had planned potentially but in reality the difference between 9 and 10 degrees uh, from the point of view of the guitar traveling through space at nearly the speed of light um, the guitar's not going to bloody notice really okay Now, <laughs> uh, Jay is trucking, uh, says off topic, but just have to say Spider-Man No Way Home is the best movie since Spider-Man 2. Huh. I'm, I'm actually happy for you guys to use the super chat function here as a way to advertise your favorite movies. Uh, I've got no problem whatsoever. I have yet to watch it, but uh, I've seen the previews and yeah, I'm really excited to see that. So, so there we go. Um, I must say, if we're going to talk movies, that uh, Spider-Man Into the Multiverse, I think actually is the best Spider-Man movie ever made and potentially it's up there in my favorite movie of all time. I'm not sure what that says about me, but I love it. <sighs> Judge away. Judge away. Josh William. Josh Williams has come in with a five pound super chat and said, Ben, um, and there's a heart. Is there a moisture meter cheaper than a Wagner that won't make me second guess it? <laughs> uh, tips for wood storage to minimize surprises when building. Okay. Um, so the unfortunately really no um i have gone through probably half a dozen uh, inexpensive moisture meters uh f f hell well here's the thing so i had a um a wood burning stove installed a couple of years ago and with the stove they gave me a free pin based moisture meter the same sort of pin-based moisture meter that I had spent 20, 30 quid on. And it's just a freebie when you buy a 500 quid or 600 quid stove. So, so no, basically the cheap ones, you really will always be second guessing and not even the cheap ones, an expensive pin-based uh, moisture meter, you will never be sure. Uh, it is literally in the design. You're testing the wood at a single position to just a, a, a depth. So, there is a reason why um, I endorse Wagner so heavily. And it is not because they are a, 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 um, a sponsor of the channel. I mean, that that helps from a point of view. I don't talk about them anywhere near as much as I want to. Let's put it that way. They are incredible. Uh, and they are 100% better than the competition now that being said if you are on a budget and you can't stretch to not even if you're on a budget hell you could you could be earning five hundred thousand pounds a year but if you're only going to use the moisture meter once then i wouldn't spend the price of the wagner meter either i mean i try and convince a friend to buy one for their workshop and then go and use theirs. But, you know, I, I, I understand uh, I understand what the, the issues are here. So that being said, a pin-based moisture meter will at least get you, hopefully, in the correct ballpark. And uh, and that's, that's the thing. You need to know the wood. 
you need to know where the wood has been you need to know how long it has been there and if the area in which the wood has been stored is relatively dry and for example you've used the the, the pin moisture meter uh, over that whole period of time if you've watched it go from 30 right down to 10 or 12 or whatever it happens to be you'll know roughly where, where it is um, Ah, tips for wood storage to minimize surprises when building. Uh, keep it inside, keep it in the environment in which the instrument is going to live in the end, but never, ever trust it. Uh, not until right at the end. And the biggest tip is, for example, if you're cutting a neck, out, uh, for example, a neck that's got a nice angled headstock and it's a through neck, so you've got a chunk and it starts at three inches, but you end up with... Uh, 20 millimeters or less of the, uh, where the neck is going to be. You make that cut and then you set it aside for a few weeks and you watch it. Use winding sticks, so a stick at either end and you can see if there's any twist that's been made. Just pay attention to your wood and you'll be there. You'll be all right. Uh, so take time. Be good. I'm swiftly going to change the subject though. Uh, Robert R says, will you be doing an inlay of the squirrel on your wall behind you to your right on a guitar? Looking good now, not buffering now. Thank you very much for letting me know. I'm low grade. I have low grade anxiety about that now. I suppose I do need to, I do need to inlay a squirrel at some point. Okay. Whew. Correction, best live action Spider-Man movie since Spider-Man 2 from JS Trucking and Guitars. Okay, fair enough. You have redeemed yourself in my eyes. Uh, Sweet Tea Guitars has sent a super chat as well. It said, this seems to be a good way to say thank you. Peace, my friend, and Merry Christmas to you and your family. Thank you very, very much, and thank you for you know, being a constant supporter. I really do sincerely appreciate it. Uh, I can't... Well... I couldn't be here. I wouldn't be here if you guys weren't weren't here. I would at this point I would at this point probably be collapsing and saying why oh why children will you not go to sleep? Damn you. But I'm here having fun. My wife's dealing with those children. Woohoo. Uh okay. Now I'm feeling better. This does seem to be running okay. Zach Ellison, how you doing? Zach says ice cream. Uh, the food references always uh, always catch my attention. Is it possible to make uh, a Les Paul style guitar with a tw with twenty five and a half inch scale? And it, yes, absolutely. I mean, it would look subtly different. Uh, and a guitarist will go, have you changed your hair? And not really know what it is until they pick her up and play it. But uh, yeah, there's no physical reason why you shouldn't do it. The pickups will be further apart than the, if it's literally, hey, this is Les Paul, the pickups would look a little bit further apart. The body would look a little bit stretched. It would be subtle and people would notice it. But, you know, who gives a crap about people? Be a misanthrope, why don't you? Uh, okay. And uh, also, would you think that Thunderbird-style banjo tuners on a V-style headstock? <laughs> yeah, bring it on. Uh, can you answer each separately? Yes. That was three questions. You're getting greedy. Um, yes, I think that Thunderbird-style banjo tuners on a V on any headstock is actually pretty cool, to be honest. Uh, I like the flexibility that they give you, and uh, modern ones are very good. Yeah, very good. So it actually annoys me now that I don't use them personally very long. Very much. Wow. Uh, the Real Wonky Dog says, Ben, it looked like you were clamping one end of the travel guitar fretboard more than the other today. Any reason? Uh, yeah, ran out of clamps. 
Um, it literally, I gave it enough pressure and then, uh, okay, now bear in mind, this was filmed, this was, that was filmed well over a week ago now, at that point. But uh, I'd clamped the clamp down and it was just a little bit off center. So I put a, another clamp next to it that was off center the other way just to close a gap. But at the same time, I looked around the whole fretboard and uh, there was there weren't any other gaps, so it was fine. Um, yeah, it was just to fix a mistake, which is you know, often why I do things. Okay. Um, Lucifer Builds changed the channel name. I like it. Okay, has sent uh, 15 Canadian dollars as a super chat. Thank you very much. And says, uh, back to sounding fall away. Okay, at which fret do I pile up the masking tape? It sounds like sounds like you're asking me where you should bury the bodies. Um, at which fret do I pile up the masking tape to make my angle? And how many pieces of tape should I use? Uh, I'm using a fender scale, if that matters. No, it doesn't really matter. I always do it at the 12th fret. Uh, so on the 12th fret, okay, not all masking tape is created equal. Some masking tape is more equal than others. Uh, some masking tape is thicker than others. The tape that I use is fairly standard, and I will use two to three pieces across the 11th and 12th fret. Okay, and then you've got a fourth piece. So, hold on. This is where this extra overhead camera really helps. So we'll have sandpaper all the way along and then about halfway along I'll put a piece of masking tape on the top of the sandpaper so that the sandpaper isn't actually abrading the masking tape that I've got on the 11th and 12th fret and that, oh, that's dusty, uh, that does that really. So uh, that will do it and at that point I I tend to have the fall away from the 14th fret 15th fret onwards but it also depends on on what the build is and how lazy I am feeling um, I I personally haven't noticed any difference between you know going to going that much or not okay Chester Yaswinski um, uh, says, just saying hi and wishing you a happy holiday, my dude. Uh, thank you very much, and hi. I am I am looking forward to maybe having a bit of a break, but uh, it's going to be at the cost of filming a hell of a lot over the next couple of days. But uh, we'll see. Uh, Element Zero Guitar says, hey, Ben, you're my hero. Thank you for <laughs> I I never know what to say. You're very kind for saying so. Thank you. Uh, how do I get better with my number 62? Uh, I've been planing walnut and purple heart and had a lot of tear out on the purple heart. Uh, do I need better sharpening or do I suck with hand tools? Okay, if it feels like you suck with hand tools, it is in almost entirely, almost always the setup of the hand tool itself. A number 62 plane is a, it's a grail actually. Uh, so. It's either it's either one of these, which is a Lee Nielsen number sixty-two. The blade is at a much much lower angle, and that means that it does work better with with difficult grain. Uh, conversely, actually, uh, a plane with a fifty-degree angle or a much higher angle is also very good with uh, with difficult grain woods. One of the things you might not have yet is with a setup with this here you can adjust how wide the mouth is and if you've got a very 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 wide mouth then you will still have tear out. You want to have the mouth be almost paper thin i.e. the blade is just sticking out and you can just see a gap. That will stop the tear out from happening as much as the uh, low angle and if you've got a, a 
a vintage Stanley number 62 than I am actually properly, properly jealous of you. Uh, now, the other thing is it's entirely possible that you need to just spend either more time sharpening or change your sharpening technique to one that is more um, replicable. Is that the correct word? Replicatable? Must be that. Okay. So, so yeah, I think it's potentially the sharpening. It's potentially a little bit of the setup of the plane. And then finally at the end, it could just be that the wood itself really, really, really sucks. Uh, I.e. Purple Heart sucks. Purple Heart is one of those things. It blunts your plane rapidly. And if it's got cross grain, it's got cross grain. And it's going to, you know, take you down a back alley and beat your ass. I think I'm trying to be too funny this time. Please forgive me. <sighs> hmm. Joe Brown's asking his questions again. Um, uh, are there any plans for new production shapes? Uh, also, would you rather lose a hand or lose the YouTube channels? <laughs> I would rather use lose the YouTube. I really would. Uh, losing a hand means losing a lot of my ability to make things. And while my life is now heavily about the YouTube channels, I could lose these and start again. I mean, story time. Uh, early on, very early on, I had uh, I had a Crimson Guitars, not a Crimson Custom Guitars. I had a Crimson Guitars YouTube channel, and uh, uh, it got. I think I had four or five thousand subscribers, something like that, and. Uh, Google banned me uh, for oh, just, well, you know what these multinational corporations are like. Um, <laughs> it was it was an unfortunate situation and the uh, my whole Google account uh, that was linked up to a shared computer. Um, do you remember Picasa? It was a sort of a picture backup slash whatever. Anyway, um, the entire hard drive and the computer was backed up and it turns out that there was some stuff there that shouldn't really be there that was backed up and, and the channel got deleted and I immediately went started a new channel and that's what we've got now so uh, if you go and search for Crimson Guitars on YouTube the actual channel it's still there saying bleep this channel was was deleted for account whatever funny now but anyway You'll notice I'm not using the uh, the close-up camera this time. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, there we go. Jaybird Customs says a uh, question for Creever. Can we get a YouTube channel thread on the Discord, please? Uh, yeah, that should be fine. So you go on our Discord channel um, to uh, to promote your your YouTube's um, absolutely fine. I think something like this came up last week where I said that uh, a lot of you are also on GGBO and on the GGBO website there are links to a bunch of channels as well. Uh, I'm here not only to promote guitar building but to promote other guitar builders um, because I do. So yeah, that's all good. <sighs> uh, JS Trucking and Guitar says, so you're basically saying that my figured purple art is going to be... <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, not fun to prep for my build, he says. Uh, trying to figure out how to say uh, that edited word. Uh, potentially, yes. Now, I love hand planes. I love hand tools. But sometimes sanding is the way. And, you know, if if a wood just will not behave, then get a sanding beam, a leveling beam, and just have at it. 
Uh, now, one final thing is even if you've got a low angle plane, uh, if you, instead of planing straight down the timber, if you skew your blade, if you, so imagine that's where my wood is. Put your plane at an angle, a plane like that, that lowers the effective angle of attack of the blade from the point of view of the wood. The blade is traveling <laughs> close to the speed of light. <laughs> it makes me happy that I've managed to put that in three times now. Uh, but yeah, it lowers the effective angle and thus uh, makes it even better at dealing with cross-grained timber. Anthony Cuncliffe says, uh, have an idea for Nick Inlays on a future build. I reckon if you wanted to, you could get the big five on there and it would be cool to see. I've managed to see four. <sighs> I think that a photorealistic, any sort of photorealistic animal on a fretboard would be great fun to do. I saw an acoustic maker do a freaking blue bottle. And it looked amazing. Uh, so, yeah. Matt Tomon says, no modulations of Mr. Ben, please. What's a modulation of Mr. Ben? Uh, Breton M says, just stream on, stream on Twitch. I am going to actually start streaming on Twitch, I think. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> okay. Uh, Zach Ellison says, uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Zach. Uh, I think it was a week ago, I may be wrong, when you showed your home shop, I saw a great guitar buried under boxes. Since it was treated that way, can I have it? Guitars equal fiddles. Uh, so funnily enough, it was literally carefully put on a soft box to be out of the way because I needed the hanger for the jazz guitar that hit the channel last week. And then a few other soft things got put on top of it. That was uh, that was shred. Um, now, as to whether you can have it, loosely, yes. Actually, you can. Uh, if you go on the main channel next week, midweek, I think, if it all goes according to plan, the 22nd or so, uh, there will be a video going live and uh, there will be not one but two of my guitars available and a, a Leatherman tool, a Leatherman multi-tool and some, some bits, uh, an Isotunes um, of your choice, uh, some the new range of stains uh, from Crimson. Uh, these beasties are going to be available. They're in fact on my workbench now, literally because I was filming that giveaway. Uh, yes, I'm looking at this camera. So uh, basically what we're doing is the 250 minute guitar, I think we called it, uh, even though it ended up taking me a lot longer than that. That guitar is being given away for a second time because the first person never claimed it. But we are now uh, to benefit um, to benefit GGBO, I am raffling off, and I did say raffling off, Shrek. Shred? Shred. Uh, I literally don't play it as much as I should. Uh, in fact, I don't play any of my guitars as much as I should, and they take up a lot of space. So my wife said, get rid of some guitars, and I thought, hey, I know a good cause. So here we go. Uh, good cause. Uh, that guitar has had an extra string put on because that's why I was down here in the first place and uh, will be available. Alrighty. Will Zuidema says, would you rather lose your radial sander or your bandsaw for use forever? I would rather use the sand, lose the sander. Uh, I would rather lose the sander because I can replace sanders with hand planes, with scrapers, and with, you know, just sanding by hand. In fact, to be honest, huh, I used to say that my random orbital sander was the one tool that I would not want to build a guitar without. Because sanding really just annoyed the hell out of me. I, I hated it. You will notice actually that in recent builds, 
fact, I've just realised that my my main random orbital sound of the Merca is actually at the tool shop and has been there for six months. So there we go. Uh, yeah, that's weird. I've been just using sanding blocks and sanding by hand, and I find it a lot more therapeutic than the noise and dust created by sander. Okay. Sweet tea guitar says, nice rig, Ben. Gotta have it all. It's surprisingly, I'm, <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. It's making this better. If I can actually show you things on, on, on a close-up camera. Um, yeah, it works. Okay. Sweet tea guitar says, I would actually think about uh, covering all of your new gear with plastic wrap or getting silicon skins for what they're available for. That stuff will hate all the dust. Uh, yep, I've got a, a deck saver for when I'm not actually using the deck. I'm also thinking about a... Um, well, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I think it's going to end up being raised up off the uh, off the workbench a little bit. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm part way through. I'm part way through sorting all of this out, to be honest. Uh, Anthony Cuncliffe has just sent a super chat with no chat, so thank you very much. Um, but uh, uh, I hope, well, send the question through at uh, Creeverai or SC Guitars and they'll make sure that I get it. Speaking of which, I should probably check. I should probably check these messages. Uh, Creeverai says the overhead camera is a little stuttery, lower frame rate or shutter speed. Uh, that reminds me, yes, I do need to go in there. It apparently films up to 4K. I'm not sure what the setting currently is. Uh, it has a digital zoom. I think it's fairly digitally zoomed in. Therefore, we're not getting the best quality at the moment. I will um, yeah, I'll be looking into that. I... I did not think that a 170 quid camera would be able to compete with the sort of thousand uh, pounds. Well, actually, no, that's an M6 Mark II. So I think they're about 1200 quid with a nice lens. Uh, you can get the body for, for, for less. And the 90D also, I mean, I think I spent a grand and a half on that whole setup in the end. And that's justified because, you know, YouTube channel and Actually, our patrons slash YouTube members helped pay for that. So, <sighs> okay. Now, uh, yeah, where are we? Vulcan says that uh, Luthia Feedback as a service. Could Crimson offer a Luthia Feedback service for, let's say, Guild or Tube members where shipping costs would be uh, on the requester? Feedback would be served as a... As a YouTube vid on the channel, could this be a thing? Cheers, V. Um, it's unlikely to happen. Uh, we are more than happy to uh, to give people feedback, but to then do that on the channel. Um, if we were losing subscribers simply because we were live streaming this sort of Q&A on the main channel, um, doing that on and I'm not denigrating your guitars in particular but just anybody who sends in a guitar uh, without being heavily um what what's we we would have to know that the guitar is good enough to be of interest to 300,000 people and that just doesn't happen uh, a lot of the time it it you know the whole point that the feedback would be requested is because you know there's stuff that needs to be improved. Um, so potentially on the extras channel, but uh, even that, I think, I don't think so. Let's put it that way. Uh, now that's not to say that we wouldn't be willing to give feedback, uh, either in person or uh, via video chat, that sort of stuff. Um, 
it's exactly the same way as uh, people will come down for a two day course um, bring one of their guitars and I'll sit there and say oh yeah I like this I like that um, yo you need to consider the string pull on your headstock for example um, it's uh, yeah it's all good now Patrick Nesbo says, Hello Ben, uh, what would be a reasonable price to ask for when buying a guitar body without routing and hardware, just the cut body? Um, I, can't, I can't answer that. Um, as much okay, as much as you can get away with charging, for one. But no, it's, it's, a, it's entirely about the wood. Uh, was the wood properly dried? Have you stored it for two years? Has, has the wood essentially, does the wood owe you rent, for example? Uh, how much time was spent creating the body, jointing it, how much time was spent drying it, how much did you buy the wood for in the first place, um, all of these things. I mean, if you've only got a very small small wood store and that wood's been sitting in your small wood store for, for a year, taking up 5% of your available body storage space, then it owes you some money. So, yeah, it's difficult. And then on top of that, what species is the wood? In the first place, it could be swamp ash, in which case super, you know, more and more expensive, uh, or it could be, you know, just a box down a bit of pine. So I don't know. I don't know. Uh, JS Trucking Guitars coming with another super chat and said, I just got the camera for filming my build, a Kodak E528. I'm so glad to see Kodak back in the business of uh, cameras. They, they 100% missed a trick, uh, having actually developed digital cameras, and then they put it on the shelf because it was going to affect their main business, which was film and developing chemicals and uh, all of the, uh, that sort of stuff. Um, ben Timon says, any tips on cameras that I can strap onto my head? Okay. Uh, I've got it in there. Uh, there are crazy people in this world that enjoy throwing themselves off mountains. And it actually seems like there's more of them than natural selection would let us believe in reality. Um, so you've got everything from the GoPro uh, down. Now, I made the mistake three or four years ago of buying a cheap knockoff GoPro and it was not great. Um, recently I bought a bunch of the new GoPro Hero 5 black whatevers and uh, they are actually pretty bloody good. Um, I find myself wondering if I could hook the GoPro up uh, as the uh, the camera above me here. <laughs> Uh, but I'll look into that. So yeah, basically GoPro is the one. Is the one. It really is. Uh, anything other than that, check the reviews and see. But uh, yeah, I like my GoPro. And uh, it's one of those things. And they're not actually that expensive. Ooh, okay, so the real wonky dog says the sound is slightly quicker than video. Uh, with him is that the case across the board so essentially the sound I might need to adjust that by a single frame I'm interested okay frugal fixer shoots in 4k mostly takes up a lot of storage space and time to edit and render even I don't bother shooting in 4k uh, I, I'm 1080 all the way I, I don't really see the point at this stage um yeah. Now, um, um, Anthony Cuncliffe, the super chat was uh, just a silly question for a bit of fun. The question was going to be, what type of sawdust best infuses with your coffee? Can you notice a difference from coffee made in the house? I don't currently have a coffee machine in the workshop, but uh, that is going to change soon once I start doing 12-hour live streams. 
Uh, I during a factory clearance, i.e., there was a bunch of tools and machinery and things that I wanted, uh, ended up picking up a couple of coffee machines. There's pod-based coffee machines, and uh, they. I have issues with them as a machine, but uh, yeah, I'm going to use them. A bunch of coffee pots came with them, so uh, we'll see. Okay. Uh, now, what type of sawdust best infuses with your coffee? I would say roasted maple. Because, you know, if you think about it, smell is just tasting at range. Um, and roasted maple smells delicious, so it probably tastes okay too. Uh, some ebonies taste horrible and should be avoided. So there is that. Okay. Uh, Ian M's coming with a super chat. Um, thank you very much, Ian. And says, uh, the black and white veneers that you use, what thickness are they? P.S. The old build series you did before the new place uh, gave me my start. Now it's an addiction. I'm, I'm really... <laughs> I'm really glad to hear that I gave you the start and uh, uh, the fact that I've managed to share my addiction with somebody else and it's actually a relatively wholesome addiction also actually makes me feel very, very happy. Uh, I'm fairly sure that the veneers are 0.7 millimeters. Uh, now, I don't have any cameras pointing that way, so I'm just going to leave you guys for a second. Uh, that's the second time today I've dropped that tool. I just want to double check this because this is the second time that I've been asked this question before. And uh, I'm not 100% certain. Uh, there should be some somewhere down here. Nope, I can't find it anywhere. Aha! There we go. Scintillating television, isn't it? <laughs> I missed a trick there. I 100% missed a trick there. I should have. Uh, I should have had my still up with the uh, with the squirrel, but I didn't. Okay, the calipers are zeroed off. Okay, that's actually saying 0.4. Mm, I've lost a set of calipers. That doesn't look like 0.4 to me. Okay, uh, 0.4 millimeters, people. I thought it was a bit thicker than that. Element Zero Guitar says, get a cheap dripper, Ben. Drink that stuff black like your soul. Or your fretboard. Yeah, I think you might be right. I think you might be right. We just bought a, a dripper for the uh, for the office at Crimson. And uh, really. In fact, I'm hoping to have um, my own brand coffee uh, at some point in the not too distant future too. Okay, Sweet Tea Guitars has come in with another uh, super chat and says, uh, how would you go about getting the most volume out of a semi-hollow build? I have a commission build and that's what he's asked for. Thoughts? Okay, I'm going to assume you saying acoustic volume. But it's a semi-hollow build. Uh, well, I would make it as, this requires thought, I would make it as hollow as humanly possible, i.e. Uh, we would go and I would have only a, oh, <coughs> you've just reminded me of an old build of mine. You need to have a serious chunk of timber uh, underneath the bridge depending on what type of bridge you're talking about. But uh, I'm assuming you've got a tunematic or something like that. So basically, uh, you want a piece of wood that is the size of the tunematic with a little bit more room, and that's that. The rest of the instrument will be as hollow as possible. Uh, the higher 
the break angle on uh, i.e. <sighs> the higher the tunematic is in relation to where the strings are anchored the more tension the more downward force the strings have and therefore the louder it should be so if you've got an acoustic guitar you will notice a difference in volume between uh, when it's normal or if you raise the saddle up uh, significantly so there's that and then you need to make it relatively thin but the, the, the problem is that you've got this chunk of wood that's stopping the vibration of the instrument the, fundamentally how an acoustic guitar works is the opposite of how an electric guitar works um, so just that word semi hollow gives a problem but I would make it as light as possible I would use as little material as possible and have a nice break angle um, so for example I would probably go oh I don't know basically make make sure the bridge is relatively high and uh, and that's it but you fundamentally don't have that many options because he wants a semi hollow if he wants a particularly acoustically loud instrument then really go acoustic and big for that matter so that's the other thing make the body bigger and wider and with more more volume um, so nebula if we had put um, acoustic strings on nebula nebula would actually have been relatively acoustically loud uh, so yeah okay kiwi quarters how are you um, we have a, a question says Ben have you considered a hollow body build we mere mortals might have a chance in hell of replicating or would that be too boring for you um, honestly I would love to do I would love to do some normal guitars I don't know I don't know what my problem is. I don't know what my problem is, and I'm going to sort it out. So there, how's that? Um, yeah. I think, I think the basics of Nebula, I think the basics of Nebula were actually, my ears are wanting to pop for some reason. Uh, fairly replicatable is that word again and you should be able to take the ideas and say okay forget all of the natural sound holes and the multi-piece sides and all of that that was just Ben being Ben and working with the wood that he had available I think uh, you could take that and um, simplify the process down um, but yeah I'm going to be doing some hollow body builds i'm going to be doing a small bodied let a small bodied acoustic guitar based on something from the 15 1600 something like that uh, actually maybe i've got this mm, yeah beautiful thing look um i'm sorry you've just reminded me of the previous question the semi hollow that i built once i made it entirely hollow and then I screwed two, it was Nebula 1, I think, actually. And then I screwed two steel bars underneath the bridge. And it was screwed in. And that pulled the whole thing together. So it had even less material. But, uh, yeah. There will be more acoustic guitars. There will be more hollow bodies. There will be more builds of all sorts and stripes. And don't forget that the new hand tool only travel guitar is being turned into a kit uh, that mere mortals will certainly be able to make uh, as a way to start. Um, John Williams says, thanks, Ben. John, not Josh. Um, did I call you Josh? I apologize profusely. Uh, how would you design a guitar for maximum tuning stability? Wood species, carbon fiber rods, bridge tuners, etc. Thanks. Okay, so modern tuners, good quality modern tuners cost a bit. In fact, I'm 
I'm at that point where I'm literally going, when I started out, that was only 20 pounds. And, you know, tuners are now 120 to 150 pounds for a good set. And that's insane to me. That being said, good quality, uh, good quality hardware will be fine. It will keep its tuning uh, perfectly well. So Goto 510s or pretty much anything by Goto is, is, is really good. Uh, it is not actually necessarily what you put into it, but how you put it in. Uh, so, for example, uh, a well-cut nut is one of the most important things for tuning stability. Uh, relatively straight string pull is absolutely essential for good, quality, good tuning stability. Uh, a break angle rather than a flat headstock is, uh, is an improvement. So a 9 degree or a 10 degree break angle on your headstock. Uh, the same thing goes with a little bit of an angle um, between the... Uh, the bridge and the tailpiece of using a tunematic, for example. Now, <sighs> carbon fiber stiffening rods, yes, emphatically. Uh, um, some of my very, 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 very early guitars were made out of one piece necks. I wasn't worried about quarter sawn or slab sawn, and quarter sawn is a little bit better, m maybe 10% better, depending on the, on the timber and uh, a little bit stiffer and better and i was using those <laughs> you don't even get them anymore i don't think uh, it's an aluminium u channel with a rod down the middle that, that compresses and uh, i had horrible tuning stability issues now it was all of the above i was bad at cutting nuts i was bad at choosing wood i was bad at drying wood I was very good at thinking I was better than I was. And that's about it. So yeah, carbon fiber, a good dual action truss rod that takes up only a bare minimum of material out of the neck. Uh, whereas the aluminum new channels were literally 10 millimeters, 14 millimeters, they were huge. And aluminum is, is rubbish. So yeah. <laughs> Creever is asking me to clap, please, so he can just check the frame rate. Okay, hold on. Uh, there we go, this camera. Uh, I'm warning you, everybody, I'm going to clap in about three seconds. Take your headphones out. There we go. Let me know uh, <sighs> what I need to change the frames to. And we'll go from there. Now, wood species... Again, you can use a softer species, but um, put it in multi-laminate rather than just a, a one-piece neck, for example. It's, it's every single little bit of the puzzle will affect your tuning stability and the tone and the sustain and all of that. And uh, the thing that will fix the tuning stability will also improve the tone to a certain extent. So there we go. Um, Element Zero Guitar says, hold up, giving bad advice on uh, our Luthier again, be right back. Um, I should spend more time on that subreddit, I really should. Um, I like it. Jay is trucking guitars, you do not need to change your logo in any way, shape or form. Uh, Creve Rice says, the sound is 99% in sync. Up, oh, yep, sync is good. It is very, very good. Fantastic. Okay, this this makes me supremely happy. Um, there we go. Now, uh, Carson says that my best quote is "smell is just tasting at range." I'm afraid it is not original. I heard it sometime in the last week. I don't know where, um, <laughs> but but it really made me think. I live with. Um, I live with three children, two of whom are young boys, and just the phrase smell is tasting at range. Uh, I'm looking at the wrong camera. <laughs> there we go. Made me think. Not nice thoughts either. So, there we go. Welsh Pigeon. 
says, have you ever made an electric guitar out of softwood? Uh, not the neck, no, but I, uh, I had some timber that came from the roof trusses of a uh, Dorchester fire station that was uh, demolished, having been standing for 100 years or so. And I took that, made some bodies, uh, shusugi bun the hell out of it. I burnt it and then finished it in oil and that. And it was fine. Old growth uh, pine is fantastic. Pitch pine is amazing. Really heavy, actually. So, again, there are softwoods that are actually really, really hard. You. I use you a lot. And it's classified as a softwood because you has needles. So, you're probably asking if I used... Um, building pine or building softwoods that you can get a big box store, that sort of stuff. And unless I was going to Shusuki Barnett, unless I was going for that sort of a finish, no, I wouldn't do it. And I would n not necessarily ever consider doing a neck out of timber like that. Uh, there are people that have done, and it's fine, but it's taking an unnecessary risk. There we go. Ian M uh, is talking to Luther for Builds and says the pots are metal cases, self-shielding from my point of view. That's how I feel as well. Um, now, they may also, in certain circumstances, actually act as an antenna and literally pick up and amplify uh, the the hum that you're trying to get rid of. So I'm not 100% sure on that. I am not great at electronics. Uh, that being said... Uh, I think I said it in the jazz guitar build, using shielded wires. No, it was in a live chat. Using, using shielded wires in between is probably worth doing, if you, at the very least. And uh, shielding paint is, uh, is good to do. Okay, so the stream's current bit rate is higher than the recommended bit rate. It really is. Okay. Uh, JS Trucking Guitar says that was just a prototype for the logo. It took some time to incorporate the truck as the neck. I like it very much though. So yeah, um, this is one of those things. I <sighs> for years I thought that I was the best at absolutely everything that I did up to and including graphic design and web design and, and logo design and all of that sort of stuff. And it actually, the older and wiser I get, the, the more I realised, you know what, there are people that do that stuff better than me. And uh, so, for example, uh, I'm working with uh, a gentleman called Bear. He actually edited that, that jazz guitar uh, restoration or repair video last week. And he also edited the Shrek... No, the Nebula Super Edit. And yes, it was the Nebula one. And uh, yeah, he's a very, very good graphic designer and doing logos and things like that. That's what he does. And he does it 10 times faster than I ever could. Um, but then again, I am very, very lucky that I have access to people like that. So, uh, so there we go. Derek Keller says, what are your thoughts on using a chainsaw to cut rough body and neck shape? I can't afford a good bandsaw scary very 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 scary um but if you have that ability then film it because making a guitar with a chainsaw that is clickbaity is all hell um you get some views ian m says it's not perfect but a hollow body certainly isn't going to be perfectly shielded exactly uh so that's the problem i essentially if you have access i.e if you have big enough f holes for example or um or a control plate that you can get to then i would be tempted to make a, a steel mesh cage around the whole thing even if it is inside a hollow body um but you know that depends on you actually being able to please excuse me somebody mentioned custard rabnox says apple crumble custard and vanilla ice cream ben after tonight when will the next live stream be? That's a very good point. 
So, well, the 26th, Christmas Eve. I, uh, Christmas Eve, Boxing Day. Um, or do I take a break? I don't know. I hadn't considered this at all. Uh, look, um, I'm going to aim for next Sunday. I don't necessarily see a reason to uh, to not stream on Boxing Day, unless you guys think that uh, I'm being an idiot, and uh, which is entirely possible. Kevin Harvey. Very good question. Uh, Kevin says, could you use multi-layer veneer tops and bottoms on a hardwood frame for a hollow body? Yes, you absolutely could. What you've just, just, just described is actually the ES-335 or 355 or 365. All of the 33 instruments. Um, <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. Those are basically uh, plywood guitars, uh, as are millions of guitars that are made and function absolutely perfectly well um, around the world. They are made out of plywood. Now, th the 335 is uh, pressed into that shape in a big heat press using heat and steam and glue and all of that stuff, and it works perfectly fine. I've got no problem with using plywood to make to make guitars. We tend not to bake our guitars. So, I'm getting tired, please forgive me. Okay. <sighs> Rap says we'll be here next week then. Uh, Alan Barnes says, hi Ben, I have a router bit. One quarter inch shaft, one eighth inch router width. Overall length is too long to route truss rod channels it makes them too deep deep can i cut the bit uh i okay sorry no honestly technically yes you could probably cut the bit but uh, surely your router has height adjustment and uh, that would be the easiest way to do it um if you cut a router bit in half, then you need to resharpen all of the top sections to the same geometry that the original bit had. Um, in other words, you've got a plunge plunge router cutter that goes in. If you just chop it off, it's not going to want to go in. And if it does, it's probably going to set fire to the guitar that you're trying to make, which is, again, that would make an interesting video, but to be avoided. Okay, uh, in your case, if you literally don't have that height adjustment, then what I would suggest you do is make a uh, an extra base for the router itself to just raise it up by whatever um, height you need. So put a half inch, make a half inch base. It just puts it higher up, go and route away. <sighs> Ian M says uh, 335 is a maple cap with spruce cores, i.e. it's maple veneer with spruce veneer. Um, just because it's made out of nice wood doesn't make it anything other than plywood. Um, but that's not to say that plywood is uh, an issue. Lisa says you need to ask your wife about the next week's live stream. Um, I will ask my wife and I will let you guys know. Um... <laughs> uh, Anthony Cuncliffe says if you plan it right you could save the 69th stream for the 4th of April and win the internet uh, that could be amazing I mean that's not actually that far away Breton M says the 26th the overmorrow of Christmas Eve damn straight uh, Element Zero Guitar says more content is better the algorithm demands it the algo demands it he says actually okay um yes i'm not sure how much the algorithm actually does anymore we've 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 hit 10,000 subscribers on the crimson guitars extras we're about to hit 300,000 if you haven't actually subscribed to the main channel please go and do that i really want to hit 300,000 subscribers um 
I am... I am giving the algorithm a lot of thought. I am... <sighs> okay, well, here we go. I am officially uh, retiring what's on the bench on the main channel. I, it is not what 90% of the people that actually watch the channel want to see. I will still be filming it. In fact, it's going to be better than ever uh, once I'm working from Crimson as well. Uh, but that will be on the Extras channel as well, which is growing. Uh, and, uh, well, <sighs> there we go. John Williams says, hi Ben, what are some telltale signs in other people's guitars that indicate it's been expertly made? Merry Christmas, stay safe. I am planning on staying safe. I am not planning on doing much of anything. Um, so yeah, you too, all of you, look after yourselves. Uh, telltale signs that a guitar has been expertly made. Uh, Okay, my mind keeps on going back to the nut. You know, if you've got a nut that is incredibly comfortable, is, is just the best way that I can say it. If the nut is shapely, if it is comfortable, if it doesn't have any sharp edges, if the meat of your hand doesn't cut itself open on that sharp corner um, at, at either edge, and uh, if the nut has been so well cut that the guitar just plays like butter, that, that's a really good sign. A I had probably built a hundred guitars before I properly understood what a good setup actually was. I'm a slow learner. That's all I can say to that. So, so yeah. Twentieth of April. I thought that's what you meant. Um, yeah, nut set up, and then at that point, it's it's just about the attention to detail. It's much much easier to to see things that don't work well than it is. Um, yeah, to specify great things. Uh, JS Trucking and Guitar says, that's because we liked What's on the Bench better when you were hosting it. That's why the views dropped. No, honestly, it's always been... Um, the, the views are about 5,000 or so views a week at the moment, and they were somewhere around about 10,000 when I was the host. Uh, that's not necessarily... It's not actually the views that is the issue. It's the fact that forty or 50,000 people will watch me make a hand plane or or work on a guitar or something and talking about the algorithm and being bloody minded about what I'm trying to do here, um, which is grow the main channel, you know, and get more and more people interested in what we're doing. Um, the algorithm comes through and it says 40,000 views, 40,000 views, 40,000 views, 4,000 views. And mm, okay, we're going to sort of punish the channel because it's not putting out the stuff that people actually want. And in reality, that it's not even necessarily about the algorithm. It's a, it is. I'm still going to put out what the people who enjoy what's on the bench want. It's just going to be on the other channel. Whew, Heart of Oak has come in. How's it going, Heart of Oak? Merry Christmas, Ben, to you and your family. Thanks for a great year. I'm looking forward to what you get up to next. Cheers, Bruce. Uh, thank you very much, Bruce. And uh, yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> waiting to see what the government says um, about what's going to happen in January. That's for damn sure. Um, but I'm incredibly excited uh, talking about this algorithm and what people want. Um, I, I, I made this. I made this little this little plane the other day, and uh, you know enough people watched me build this that I know that if I do more of this, which is something I really, 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 really want to do, it will be watched. So, you know, it's it's both, hey, I'm going to seriously enjoy making small projects that are finishable 
in a short space of time that are streamable so people can actually watch and interact with me on a much more personal level and uh, you know on top of that are things that are, are going to give me I pushed the wrong button ha! Uh, things that are going to give me um, uh, you know a boost in the algorithm but it, it's about me having fun doing things that I know a lot of you enjoy so I'm going to do more of them I am going to do more repairs I'm starting to enjoy repairs a lot more than I used to so yeah there Ooh, this reminds me actually talking about things that I really enjoy where's the uh, there's that one this box has been sitting here to, to remind me the live stream one of you fantastic people sent me some chocolate which I opened on the live stream and immediately fell in love with and because I mentioned Om Nom on the live stream they sent me a box of chocolates from from them and this um, the coffee and milk chocolate is literally my favorite chocolate in the entire world and uh, this this is actually that's been opened a little bit I close it up again so I could do this I'm I yeah I shouldn't eat chocolate because it's, it's naughty because I'm naughty but I thought that I would uh, mention them again the best chocolate I've ever tasted in my entire life bar none okay Divergent Guitars Ben homemade eggnog with aged rum In my entire adult life, I don't think I've ever actually had eggnog. Am I missing out? Let me know. Question. When to drill holes for a tunematic bridges posts? Before or after applying penetrating oil finish? Okay, technically before. Technically uh, way before. You are supposed to drill all holes before you apply finish. Uh, I seem to always do it afterwards. I'll get a guitar right to high gloss and then start drilling holes in it with gay abandon. And I think it's, um, I get a perverse enjoyment out of uh, people freaking out in the comments saying, I can't believe you just drilled a hole into that perfect tar. I don't know. Um, it comes down to the fact that I often didn't actually have the bridge to hand when I started a guitar build and uh, yeah, I just didn't have the money to spend on it and then to have that 40 quid sitting in a drawer waiting so but the, the the real way you're supposed to build a guitar is with everything in hand before you get there so there we go <sighs> um, Marsha Levine how are you Marsha says is it selfish of me to hope that the live streams don't get so big that interaction becomes less likely it's happened with others I used to watch. Um, the beautiful thing, Marsha, is that... I, well, where are we? We're at 130 concurrent viewers. Uh, on the main channel, it, it hits maybe a couple hundred at the, at the most. Um, I, I am still... I don't think that's going to happen. The, the fact is, we do have a couple of moderators um sitting in and there will be more and more moderators and uh, it's one of those things where hey if you absolutely desperately have a question and you know it's something that i want either a super chat obviously but just at one of the moderators and uh, they will try and get in touch with me and and make sure that i you know answer it um uh, creever is telling me that i need to adjust the white balance on all cameras um, okay, and here's a miss. So here's a case in point. Uh, Luther for builds. I missed a super chat. I thought I might have. Uh, I was gonna go back. In fact, there's one from F uh, Frugal Fixer. I need to go back to as well. There. Um, 
I 100% will get all of the Super Chats. Uh, always, no matter how long it takes, even if the stream gets massive. Um, so there we go. Luther for Builds says, uh, on a hollow electric, uh, would you have to shield the entire inside for the electronics? Uh, and no. Uh, shield as much as you possibly can. Now, my understanding... My understanding of the way that the... <laughs> so we've got a 50 cycle or a 60 cycle hum that comes from mains electronics. Okay, That interacts with our humbuckers or with our pickups at least. Not humbuckers because they're designed to get rid of that. And goes into the guitar and creates this buzz that we don't want. Okay. Now, you're building a, a casino guitar, for example, or a 335 or um, one of our PAA followers, something like that, and uh, you want to avoid that hum. You, you do multiple things. You paint as much of the inside as you, as you can, or at least around the pickups. And essentially, if you've got a section of shielding paint with only the height of the guitar from one side being available to the uh, the sound waves the 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 hum coming in basically this the 50 or 60 cycle 50 or 60 hertz cycle coming in now what from what i understand he says stumbling over his words fantastically bear in mind this is going to be turned into a podcast is that the length of the 60 hertz cycle is so long that it can't actually get in if the gap is of a certain size. Now, your microwave is a perfect case in point. I mean, it's literally in the name, microwave. The front of your microwave has got holes in it and you can see into the microwave. You can stand with your face right up against it and you're not gonna get cooked. And you're not going to get cooked because the perforations in the door there are so small that the microwaves can't actually, they're too big to go through them. Okay. Um, and it's the same sort of thing, I think, with, the shielding, with shielding a cavity uh, of a guitar. Uh, and the, the 60 hertz... I think it's actually about 60 centimeters and 50 is about 50 centimeters. So I don't know. I might be wrong. I've been told I'm wrong, but I've also been told by people I trust that I'm right. So I don't know. Anyway, uh, so that's one thing. Paint, you know, a chunk of it, but don't necessarily paint the entire internals of the guitar, especially if you've got F-holes. Uh, use shielded wire everywhere, 100%. You know, every single little cable could be a shielded wire, and that just that does the job. Make sure that it's grounding out properly and all that jazz, and and be done with it. You'll be okay. It was Nebula that I was talking about all this sort of stuff. And if necessary, you can create a cage, a Faraday cage, uh, in uh, wire mesh or just metal that goes internal to the guitar and is held in place by the nuts. Um, that hold your pots in. So there's there's multiple different ways of doing it. Okay, these the, the comments are boosting, or are, are booping all over my screen. I'm missing some stuff. Um, woo. Uh, Anthony Cuncliffe says, uh, looking at your setup, I can't help but feel you should build a mouse made out of a wood species of your choice. Uh, I think you could make something really awesome and find the perfect fit for your hand. Uh, the, the, the beautiful thing, the beautiful thing, the problem I've got with this mouse is that every now and then I pick it up and I'm like, why is everything backwards? Why is everything backwards? Why? And I actually panic for about 30 seconds before I realize I've just uh, actually just turned it around the wrong way because I suck. Um, yeah, a, a, a wooden mouse could be quite cool and really good. Um, uh, Luther for Bill says, lol, thanks man. Uh, kind of went over my head. So what you're saying is to put a neck on my microwave. Okay, got it. 
put a neck on your microwave at almost the speed of light and you're all right um yeah uh etsy guitar says 130 is an all-time high for this channel i think so yeah so that's about 130 people watching uh, live. Now, one of the um, one of the other things that's going to go go on is uh, I'm finally actually going to get access, or give myself access, or make a point of getting access to the Crimson Guitars Instagram uh, channel, and I'm going to start posting and making stories on there far more regularly. So if you need any more of me in your life. Um, that will happen but uh, essentially i will be uh, posting on there about the live streams so we should the live stream should actually get a bit more uh, but it's good because it means that i won't run out of questions I, I, I really yeah which is always good robert r says to me eggnog tastes almost like a liquid vanilla ice cream with a bit of extra flavor you hold you 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 sold me a liquid vanilla ice cream, done. Uh, okay, hold on. Frugal Fixer says I missed a bit, but I sold the extra shopsmith and reclaimed floor space. Stretch and the thickness sander have permanent homes on the new one I've got. That's perfect. This is the, the my my issue here is I'm going to have to put something underneath this main camera so that I don't walk into it. Uh, I had a camera off on the side here looking down and uh, smacked my bonce on that the other day. Um, anyway, Leon says, Hi Ben, can you glue the tote of a plane that's broken horizontal about two centimeters above the base? And what's the best way to do that? Um, yes, you absolutely can. Uh, honestly, just Super glue, just super glue it together really is a possibility. Um, it's a bit awkward to clamp, so pre uh, set up your clamps beforehand and test it and see where you're going. Uh, a lot of people do it and don't use the right glue, so first choice would be normal wood glue, period. Uh, clean it up. If it's not entirely broken, use super glue. If it is completely separated, then wood glue clean it up check the test fit and clamp it up and, and leave it alone after that the fact you can then use uh, rosewood dust and super glue to fill any gaps that are left sand it down put a coat of shellac on and you probably will not even notice that it happened Whew. frugal fixer shop says uh, he sold his uh, <laughs> he sold his machine um, for two hundred and twenty-five dollars. It was a free to him machine, and he sold it for two hundred and twenty-five. It's absolutely amazing when that sort of stuff happens. Um, so, uh, what was it? My my van. My my landlord drove into the side of my van. I bought it for five hundred quid. I bought it knowing that it was rusty wreck. It only had six months left on the MOT, but that was when I was moving into Crimson headquarters. I knew I was going to scrap it. He drove into the side of me. Um, I then scrapped it, and he, he phoned his insurance company and told his insurance company to pay me. They said, how much did you buy it for? I said 500. They gave me the 500 quid. I'd already scrapped it for 200 quid, so I made a 200 quid profit on a dead Ford Transit van that was rusted to hell. Fantastic. Vax Headroom says a 60 hertz wave is giant. Speed of light is 300 million meters per second. One sixtieth of that is the wavelength, about five kilometers. You sure? Matt Tomon says the mouse is easy. Paint one end black. Surely meant crimson. Uh, Carson Whitling says, how often do you actually sit down and play a guitar? <laughs> and what's your favorite guitar to play? Honestly, nowhere near as much as I like. I also have three children and several businesses. Uh, I probably once a, once a week, really, if I'm being honest. Uh, I have the inclination to 
sit down and pick up a guitar and actually sit down and play a guitar myself on an almost daily basis, but just not often enough. It's perverse. It's like builders living in a wreck of a house or painters and decorators living in a wreck of a house. Anyway, um, what's your favorite guitar to play is my 12-hour build. Um, I love that guitar. I absolutely do. The Scion comes a close second, although my one's a little bit heavy. Also, how would you blend oil-based stains? I'm having a hard time making a nice fade from brown to amber. Whew. Um... That's interesting. I haven't actually played with oil-based stains since 1999. <laughs> no, probably 2001. But um, uh, saying the late 1990s sounded a little bit more fun. I... Basically, you can actually blend the stains together. If they're both oil-based, they should just blend and you should be able to off the instrument uh, with a palette knife on a piece of glass, mix them together to get the, 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 the tone you want. But to actually create a burst by hand is almost impossible. Your best bet is to lay the entire coat over the whole instrument uh, and then sand back the central section to give you your burst. Um, uh, I do think that that's pretty much the, the only way to do it. Sirdar Carvin says, uh, my first ever client has a fretless classical guitar. The issue is, it's buzzing when you play at the first fret area. No fret, but buzz. How can I fix it? Uh, essentially, that string is a little bit too low, or the nut is a little bit too high. I would, first of all, lower the nut, as, the nut slots as low as they will comfortably go, and... Uh, and go from there, basically. Uh, it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same as setting up a guitar with frets. Check your uh, relief. Check how straight the neck is. You want a little bit of relief to counteract the uh, the vibration of the string. Uh, check the action at the bridge and at the nut. And with a combination of adjusting those things, you will be able to make an instrument perfectly flat but uh, yeah check how straight the fretboard itself is just with a straight edge JS trucking and guitar says how often do you pick up and play the complication not very not very at all I'm seriously considering donating that guitar to a museum um, which would make me feel really cool because hey I've got a guitar in a museum but <sighs> She's just, it was done as an experiment. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Borgonian evolution says wavelength is velocity over frequency. <laughs> I've got no idea. Um, Paul Anderson says Ben's best quote is surround yourself with beautiful tools and you will make beautiful things. I wholeheartedly agree. I wholeheartedly agree with that sentiment because I said it, but hey. Um, now, we're talking about good quality chisels and gouges, I think. Um, I... I have Narex, so these, uh, this set of chisels behind me, hold on, where are we? This set of chisels behind me are actually via, uh, they're exclusive to Workshop Heaven. They're Narex blades uh, created in a format actually specifically for them. Uh, handles, I can't remember the wood, it's kind of boxwoody and then put together at Workshop Heaven. They're fantastic. They keep their edge very, very well. I absolutely love Ashley Isles chisels. I still regret auctioning off my set of Ashley Isles chisels for, uh, uh, on behalf of Great Guitar Build-Off. Uh, they, I think, feel a little bit harder than the Narex. I have had limited edition Narex that worked, worked very well as well. Um, there are 
There are options. There are options indeed. Kevin Harvey's been using the Stanley 5002 chisels for years and he's very happy with them. We sell those at the, crim at, uh, the vintage tool shop. Uh, we've got, well, whether they're all listed or not, I don't know, but we, I have got hundreds and hundreds of them. Okay, R. Akers says, I've built copper wire cages for arch tops that unfold inside the guitar and sort of jam between the top and bottom so they didn't move. They seem to work okay. Um, jamming between the top and bottom would inhibit your sound, though, uh, I would suggest. George Davis says, I have a 30-year-old Epiphone Les Paul and the finish is cracking on the binding and it has a couple of chips. How can I stabilize the crapping, cracking uh, and repair the chips? Super glue, I would suggest. Um, yeah. 30-year-old Epiphone Les Paul. I wonder what they glued that on with. But yeah, I think super glue should be fine. Robert R says, Ben, are you going to build a similar camera setup in the build space at Crimson Proper? 100% yes, I am. Although instead of the uh, Atom Mini Pro, I'm going to go for the Atom Mini Pro, whatever the next one up is. Um, so essentially the Atom Mini here allows me to record uh, whatever you are currently viewing. So as I flip through through cameras... Uh, then it allows me to record this whole thing as it's happening. The next level up allows me to record all four cameras all the time to their own feed. So I would be able to give a hard drive to Talitha or Bear or whoever happens to be editing and the poor bastards will then have to watch. <laughs> they would put all four videos on the timeline and then they would be able to pick and choose in a multi-view sort of setup. They would be able to pick and choose what you guys see rather than me doing it live here. Yeah, see? Um, so, but yeah, all in all, I am intensely happy with how this has worked out. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's incredible. And I can actually have a fourth camera as well. Um, Instead of having the HDMI from the computer going to you guys, I would have I would during a normal build have a fourth camera, and it's incredible. Okay, Ian M says I wired my whole house for three and a half millimeter audio using Cat. Five, super low noise now maybe that's the fix for the semi hollow build kicking around in the chat okay that's an incredibly interesting idea uh, I have used uh, dead or obsolete charging cables before which is nicely shielded cable uh, as it's a multi-core cable I... yeah I'm not entirely sure if it was charging or audio cables, but either way, it's one of those things. Okay, Borgonian evolution. Uh, what we do to kill radio frequency or RF interference in remote control flying toys, uh, which is a hobby I've always wanted to get into, like always. Uh, is to twist the wires and the ground wrapped around the signal wires. That is the Faraday cage. So you've got a ground wire that's going around and it's twisted together and that acts as a Faraday cage. That's, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Frugal Fixer says, uh, at least your 12 hour build is 12 hours. I've been binging Adam Savage. His one day builds are a figment of someone's imagination. I did the stretch bandsaw live. It was a thrill. I now know that jazz. Um, yeah, I love Adam Savage. I really do. I really do. Um, but to call it a one day build and then it's not. It's just a build video that's going over a, a bunch of different times 
JS Trucking coming with the Super Chat and said, if you thought Talitha was upset with your antics, now just wait until it's quadrupled with the new setup. Uh, I did promise her it was only going to be three cameras, but uh, the end the end should be, uh, it should actually be better. It really should. Instead of, anyway, I've been talking th her through this whole thing and we were looking at the quality of the footage and all that sort of stuff today. So yeah, she's 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 fine, I hope. Sweetie's got to go, uh, cleaning out his entire shop, everything out and back in, clean and reorganized. Somehow this excites me. I, seriously, I pop out here. I was here uh, for an hour this afternoon just moving bits of metal around and saying, oh, I'm going to move that, tidy that, move the screen there so it's next to the computer. I initially had it on top of the bandsaw. Tidying up a workshop is one of the joys of having the workshop. Just being in the space is important. Uh, anyway, look, we are coming up to two hours here. Now, it had a little bit of a rocky start, but I do feel the need to uh, come to a close, really. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, Alex Jernquist, Jernquist, Jernquist? I don't know how to pronounce your name. I apologize for that. Um, are you likely to do a headless build anytime soon? Cheers from Sweden. Uh, yes, I 100% am. Emphatically. Sweet Tea Guitar says, My son bought me a complete set of Narex limited edition chisels for Christmas last year. I love them. <coughs> He's a keeper. We, we, don't, uh, we don't engage in 30th trimester abortions here. Um... I'm sorry if that one was a little bit dark for you. <sighs> a dark sense of humour is like food. Not everybody gets it. I'm just watching to see the subscriber count just drop. Okay, I'm super tired. Super, 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 super child. Ch tired. Tired. Okay. Rab Knox says, just in case I don't get a chance before we finish, I just want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and I'll see you all next Sunday. All the best, folks. Okay. Uh, Anthony Cuncliffe said, did we get the raffles, uh, the details on how to enter the raffle, please? That will all be live uh, on the video that I filmed tonight. It's going live midweek next week. There will be links uh, to where you can buy into the raffle and uh, how to actually enter the competition to win all of the other stuff. Um uh, uh, JS, oh, JS Trucking and Guitar says, no, no, I meant when you have issues like the first hour of the Rabbit Plane stream, searching for an hour for the chisel sitting on the bench. Yes, I have considered that. Um, now, the beautiful thing is, I can be, <laughs> I can be streaming and not actually recording. So I can stream to you guys, that's absolutely fine, but I can choose which parts of the stream I actually record to send to Talitha. So instead of the full six hours or six and a half hours, she will still only get two and a half hours worth of footage to, to fiddle through. Uh, so, yeah. Tahoe Mike says, you showed the camera around the room the other day. How did you collect that much stuff in there in just a few months since you built the shed? Uh, the problem is I've got the vintage tool shop as well and my my collection is I just keep on getting stuff but I'm now in the process of moving the vintage tool shop to Crimson Guitars headquarters and there's stuff in here that shouldn't be in here now I've got some some tools that I repair and restore here to then go back to the shop to sell and just I'm a hoarder we need to have an intervention seriously Please don't ever share that clip with my wife. <sighs> Grave Rye loves dark humour, but maybe not on a live stream. I agree. Um, okay. Get on your feet music says, Hi Ben, I revisited your vlog about useful books to read regarding building guitars and woodworking in general. Are there any additions to the list in 2021? That is actually a major video that I need to do. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to take note of that. 
Whoop. If I wasn't in selfie mode. I never took selfies. Ever, ever, ever. And now it's expected. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Robert R says, I hope the wife isn't watching then. Absolutely not. Um, she listens to me talk more than enough. Um, Paul Anderson says, what British toolmaker do you wish was still making tools but isn't anymore? James Howarth. Uh, but he's been dead since the 1880s, I think. Um, I mean, I wish Norris planes were still a thing. I wish Spears of Ayer were still uh, in the family and still making planes. Um, but yeah, it's going to be... Addis. Addis chisels and gouges. JB Addis. Uh, in fact, we were asked about um, recommendations for chisels. Another one is Henry Taylor for carving gouges and things. Particularly good. Uh, Robert Sorby are okay, but I haven't actually owned and played with a full set of their chisels before. So, yeah, that's one of those things. Okay. Ben Timer says, if you need me to look after some of your tools, let me know. Um... Uh, Kabayoth says, give Talitha our best. We appreciate all her hard work getting the videos out. Seriously, she puts up with so much and she is um, a good editor. We all, we all read the books we read and the newspaper articles or the magazine articles or, you know, watch videos that are 10 minutes and perfect on the nose and all that jazz. It's all about the editor. Unsung heroes. So, yes, I will tell her. Um, Luther Bill says, well, I'll take that number seven if you feel like you have too many. Over my dead body. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mr. Waffles takes selfies all the time because I'm so pretty. Okay. Oh, look at that. Yeah, 132 likes and only 106 people watching now because I said I was going. So uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, Mr. Waffles says, Norris? I need one. Um, I mean, I have like five or six in here let me know if you which one you need and uh, i'll finish the restoration process we'll go from there anyway uh, everybody i want to say thank you incredibly very much for your support i seriously appreciate it uh, it's been an excellent stream if i do say so myself and uh, i think that um, i think that i will be back next week uh, if it isn't going to be um, the day after Christmas, Boxing Day, then uh, I will reschedule for another day within the week, but uh, I'll let you know. And I am going to be doing, with this setup, some more live streams on the main channel, but it'll be uh, full builds and bits and pieces like that. Uh, now, we are just about to hit 300,000 subscribers, and I will be doing another sort of full day live stream guitar build in the workshop. I'm not sure exactly what I'm even going to build yet, but I've got a few weeks to figure that out. Tutum Carmen says, When I was at Crimson, Talitha was described as the Ben manager. Sucks to be her. I have oppositional defiance disorder and I don't like being told what to do. <laughs> okay, anyway. Thank you to everybody. I love you guys. And uh, I will. I will see you soon. Goodbye.